Let's take a little while just to kind of look at the different animal phyla and how these three main characteristics relate to them. Uh, we have, of course, the periphera, which are the sponges, the cnidaria, which are the uh, sea anemones, the corals, the uh, Portuguese man of war, another jellyfish, platyhelminthes, the flatworms, including free living and parasitic forms the nematoda, or round worms, the annelids, molluscans, and arthropods, which are all rel relatives to each other. Annelids are earthworms and leeches, molluscans, clams, uh, snails, octopi, and arthropods, the uh, insects and crayfish and such. The echinoderms, which include things like starfish, sea urchins, and the chordates, which are fish up through humans, the organisms with backbones. Now, relative to this, if we look at tissue, symmetry, and body cavity for each of these, uh, starting with the peripherans, they, they have no true tissue. They are asymmetrical. They sit in one place. And they have no body cavity. You can't have a body cavity if you do not have the three tissue layers. Moving on up to the cnidarians, they have two tissue layers, an ectoderm and an endoderm. Sorry, should be at this point. Uh, they have a radial symmetry because they are slow moving at best. And they are acelomate. They do not have that middle body cavity, they don't have mesoderm for it to occupy. The platyhelminthes are the flatworms. They have reached the three tissue layer level, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. And everything higher than this on the phylogenetic tree will have three tissue layers. They are bilaterally symmetrical. They move typically in a given direction. They are streamlined in form. Uh, they have cephalization. And most everything on up is bilaterally symmetrical, except you remember I mentioned that the echinoderms have bilateral larvae and radial adults. And then looking at body cavity, of course, preference have none. The cnidarians and platyhelminthes are acelomate, platyhelminthes being the first true acelomates because they have mesoderm, but the mesoderm is solid. The nematodes being the only phylum that are pseudocelomates, having a cavity within the mesoderm between the gut and the body wall, but it's unlined. And then starting at the annelids on up, everything else is coelomate with a lined body cavity in the mesoderm between the gut and the body wall. I hope this helps you make some sense of both what are the characteristics of these organisms and how these characteristics have evolved over time as these different phyla have come about. Let's quit there.